Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we've got one more piece to go for the base character here, and that is the eyes. So for the eyes, let's uh, bring in a sphere right over here, a UV sphere. And I think what I want is uh, 16 rings and 24 segments. Let's see how this works. I want, no, I think I want 16 segments and 24 rings here. I think that's what I want. Yeah. I'm also going to go ahead right up front and add a subdivision surface modifier to it. And also I'll smooth it over here under tools. I also want to rotate it. So let's turn it 90 degrees in the X. And let's see how that works for us. I think I'm going to move it to its own layer as well. I'm going to press the M key and just move it over one layer. The eye is actually made up of two, uh, two pieces or two parts. One is the inner eye with the um, iris and the pupil, and the other is the outer eye that's the uh, cornea. And the outer eye is usually more um, transparent and um, reflective, and uh, the inner eye, you know, has the, the color of the iris and the white of the eye. So we really need two objects for this. So I'm going to take this object and rename it to I inner. And then I'm just going to duplicate it, Shift D, and leave it in place. And I'll call this one I outer. And then I'm going to hide the I outer for a while. We're going to work on that in a bit. So I'm going to click on the eye to hide that. All right, so now we just have the eye inner here. And what I'm going to do is take, go out one, two, maybe three edges here. So maybe to this edge right here. What I want to do is insert edge loops on the either side of this edge. So I want to insert an edge loop right here. And I want to insert an edge loop right here, kind of evenly spaced. And let me take a look at this from the side now. And what I need to do is move this pivot point right to here. So before I do any of this stuff, I'm going to select that ring and press Shift S to move the cursor to the selected. There we go. Now, once again, I'll select that point in the middle and control up arrow until I get to that third ring. And now I should be able to change my pivot point to the 3D cursor, go to the scale tool, and now as I scale it should flatten up at that ring there where the cursor is. It's going to scale around the cursor or along the cursor there and I'll bring it in and I might even want to just bring it in so it's a little bit curved in there. All right that looks pretty good. Let's uh, begin scaling in for the pupil. I'm going to go to face mode and I want to select all of these faces here so I'll just press the C key and click and drag for my circle select tool. Now that I've got that, I want to extrude back into the eye. So this is going to be the black of the pupil here. So I'm going to press E to extrude. And I'll move back. Now this is going to... Wah. <laughs> so that's not exactly what I want. I think what I want to do is extrude one more time here. Hit the E key again, and now I'm going to pull back so I can get a sharper edge there. E one more time, take it back again, 
And now to finish it off back here, I'll hit E. And then maybe E one more time. And then scale that in some. Oh, I'm sc uh, scaling at the cursor still. I don't want to do that. I want to go back to median point, And that should help me scale a little more evenly here. There we go. All right, I think what I'm going to do is bring that back out and catch these edges here and then scale them in just a bit. Okay. All right, so there we have the inner eye. What we can do is go to edge mode and select every other edge here. Like this. Select all these edges and then hit the delete key and choose dissolve edges and that will get rid of the tries and create quads here for all the faces and that's usually what you want for a character like this is all quads and no tries so let's do the same thing back here I'm just going to quickly select every other edge back here and then delete and dissolve edges. All right, so there we have the inside of the eye. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the outer eye now. So I'm gonna hide the inner eye away and bring back the, the outer eye. Now this needs to be just a little bit bigger than the inner part. So I'll scale it up a tiny amount, maybe something like 1.02 here. That should do it. And for this, we need to do pretty much the same thing, but instead of flattening in, we need to bulge out at the front of the eye. So let's count out three edges to three. So we want to insert edges around this one here. So I'm gonna press Control R to insert edge loops here. And then we need to, I think our cursor should probably be pretty much in the correct place. But now let's change our pivot point to the 3D cursor and select these points here. Now let's go to the scale tool and scale out just a bit. So now this outer portion, this eye outer will be clear or trans transparent and will be highly reflective. And so this bulge or outside the uh, pupil here will catch the light in the scene and make the eye sparkle. All right, so here we have the outer eye and the inner eye. And I think what I also wanna do here is delete every other edge out front. This is helpful because when you have a lot of edges going into one point here, you can kind of see the polling on it. And if this is going to be highly reflective, then uh, we may be able to see that pole and we don't want to be able to see that. So let's at least reduce the amount of edges that are going into that point by deleting and dissolving edges, and we'll do that to the back. Even though this will probably never be seen, we'll do it anyway, just to keep things clean and tidy the way they should be. All right, so there we have the outer eye and the inner eye. Okay, so now we should probably put the eye up into the head um, to do that, just to make our lives easier, I'm going to go ahead and combine these two, the eye inner and the eye outer, um, for now. And then um, at a later time, I'll split them apart again. I'll move the pivot back to median point. I'll select the eye inner and eye outer and press Control J. And now, I'm just going to call this eye left. Oops. There we go. So let's uh, move this back up. I'm gonna bring up the characters layer 
and let's try and place this in here. All right, let's see if this was even close here. No, not at all. <laughs> all right, so as you can see, we've got some work to do here. All right, so now the trick is how do we get this eye to fit or the eye socket to fit around the eye while not totally destroying the look uh, that we've established? Well, it's not easy. <laughs> um, let's try this. What I'm going to do is select some of these points here and begin moving them forward a bit. So they mold around the eye. What I'm going to do now is extrude this edge back into the eye socket so that it kind of creates a, um, a suction cup around the eye um, so that when the characters, if the camera ever gets like this to the character, we don't see inside their empty skull there. So let me go inside here and take a look at how we can do this. I think I'm just going to take this edge and let me frame up with the numpad period key here. I'm just going to take that edge and extrude that back a bit and scale it out. So I'm just going to hit E and go straight to my scale tool and scale that out some. And then push it back a bit so it kind of seals up around that eye. And then I think I'm going to do one more extrusion out. Bring that back and scale it up some so it seals up around the eye there. All right, let's see. So now I should be able to look in here and not see anything. Although I think I'm going to select this edge and scale this one in a bit so it seals it up a little bit better. And there you go. So now what we need to do is mirror this eyeball over to the other side. The only thing we really need to do is set the origin of this object to the center of the grid. So I'm going to make sure the cursor is down at the center of the grid. There it is. And what I'm going to do is set the origin of the object down there to that 3D cursor. So there it is down there. Now when we apply a mirror modifier to it, it's going to mirror along that x-axis around that pivot point. So now I just need to go to add modifier and mirror and there it is. I'm going to apply this. So now we've got both eyes and I'm just going to call them eyes for now because they are all one object now. Um, and we'll split them apart at a later point. Um, and now we have our character and our eyes and we are pretty much done with the base character. Now there's some more point pulling I'd like to do. I think his eyes are still looking a little, a little goofy and I think the forehead and brow needs to be worked on. Uh, but generally speaking, that is our character. So for the next videos, we'll begin working on the clothes and accessories of the character. See you then.